Well, welcome to part two. Uh, if you have not watched part one yet, then I suggest that you go watch that one first. It doesn't matter so much, but uh, I'm not going to give much of an intro here. I'm going to get right into it. Here are some books that I've been reading over the last years on Audible. I've been consuming, uh, read, consume, whatever we want to call it. And uh, I'm just using Audible as my guide. I'm looking through the list of books and I think I did about half of them in the last video, and now I'm going to continue my list. And this time, maybe the camera won't get all fuzzy. I think that happened when I got up to take care of the pets to let them in through the back door, and I came back and it didn't refocus. So, uh, yeah, you don't care. All right, next book. Um, not sure if I even recommended this one before or not. I'm not sure if I added this. I'm going to start over if I didn't. Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And I'm not sure if it was here. I, I read the book and then I also read the summary. So uh, I, I like to do that sometimes. I'll read the book summary or I'll, I'll download it for a buck or two or three on Audible. And then I, if I like it, then I'll do the whole book or if I think the whole book's going to be interesting. And this is one that is definitely worth doing the whole book, I suggest. Um, not, not a great, great, great book, but yeah, pretty darn good. Um, why some things really work well, um, why some things have success, and why things are, most things are not outliers by definition. Next is the 12 Rules for Life by um, Jordan Peterson, um, Anecdote to Chaos. And these are great, especially if you're not, I don't know, if, if you're not squared away. And when I say squared away, if you were the me when I was 20 years old or 22 years old or whatever, like I wasn't squared away yet. I was still searching. I didn't know a bunch of stuff. I didn't have, you know, I grew up without a dad in the picture. And so I, if, if you grew up with a strong father in the home who loved you, but was also really directed you and you helped them at his work and, you know, out on the farm or whatever. Okay. Maybe this isn't as important, but very few people today had that old fashioned strong father figure. And if you didn't uh, let Jordan jump in and kind of help you out a little bit on this and the, the 12 rules for life. Very good. Very much worth reading. Do it. Um, next, the tipping point by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, and I think this one, I just did the summary of it was pretty good. Um, worth reading at least the summary. This one was uh, by Flashbook summaries. I think there was another summary I did that was also by them. They're, they're pretty good. Um, some of the summary things are horrible, but yeah, that was pretty good. Um, so yeah, uh, Tipping Point by Malcolm Gladwell, worth the read. Uh, the summary, and I believe I did the whole book on that one as well. Okay, let's see, that was one of my wife's books. Okay, uh, by Robert Greene. The 33 Strategies of War, uh, definitely worth reading. This is kind of like Stal, uh, Saul Alinsky's book. Sometimes you read a book not because you want to learn how to be a bad guy, but there are books out there that tell you how the bad guys think and what they're doing and what their strategies are. And if you read enough, if you consume enough of these books, then you'll see somebody doing something and you'll just it will be so clear to you what's really happening. And, and I can't emphasize this enough. Study the enemy's playbook. And then when they're doing a play, everybody else will not realize that it's even a play. And you'll go, oh yeah, I know what they're doing. And, and you're usually right. Sometimes you can be wrong, but this is one of those things um, well worth well worth reading. Uh, you know, the little tidbits that you pick up, and, and I don't think it was from this, I think it was from another one that I haven't mentioned. It might have even been from the book, uh, Never Split the Difference. But just here's just a little tiny anecdote. If somebody is saying to you, well, we really can't come down on our price on that. If they use the word we, it's probably just them. And they are the one in control. If they use the word I can't come down on the price, then chances are it's not really up to them. There is a we involved. They have a boss or another decision maker. That one little tidbit, like remember that in life. And when somebody is doing that, just know that with a, a, you know, a fairly high degree of certainty, 80% of the time you'll be right, 80 or 90, 
if somebody says, oh yeah, we can't do that, you know that that person is in charge. So these little tidbits, that's why I, I love reading a good bit and I suggest you do too. Um, there's so much you'll pick up on and you know, don't even realize you're doing it, but you are. Okay, so enough about the 33 Strategies of War by Robert Greene. The Gaelic Wars, the campaigns that made Julius Caesar a Roman legend uh, by Charles River Editors. I didn't get it. I, I don't know if I, maybe I'm just not smart enough or well-read enough or whatever. I think I read this because I think it was John Taylor Gatto who strongly recommended it in one of his books or lectures. And so I thought, okay, I'll give this a go. And, and I didn't, didn't really get, it didn't have a big impact on me. Um, but some people probably liked it. Um, Leviathan. Uh, originally published in 1651. That's before I was even born. Uh, that's an old book. Um, and I don't even really remember. Um, I don't remember it. Like I have a general idea of what it's about because we use the term. But yeah, I can't give a good thumbs up or thumbs down. So do your own research, as the conspiracy conjecturist would say. Um, exactly what to say. The magic words for influence and impact by Phil M. Jones. As I recall, this book was good. It's not a Caldini book or a, even a Scott Abbott Adams type book, but it was it was pretty good um, and worth reading if you're interested in being a, a communicator. And, and when I say communicating, kind of like my last point, when you hear a politician or a salesman using certain words and certain things, it sure is fun if you can immediately pick it out and realize, oh, this is a strategy. This is a, um, this is a persuasion technique. I get it. Um, you know, like if you're ever at a restaurant and a server puts a mint on your bill, on your check, and they walk away from the table and they get about two steps and they turn around and they say, hey, you guys were awesome. Thank you. And they put another mint. Well, they know because they know about human uh, communication and human psychology, they know that that will probably get them a bigger tip. Well, if you know this and you've read about the study in which they determine this and you're at the restaurant and you see that, you know the person has been well-trained. They, they understand NLP and they understand psychology. Um, whereas the, the next table over is like, oh, they really liked me. That was so nice of them to give me another uh, mint. Uh, so it's it's such a rewarding thing if you know some of these tricks and such. All right, so after that one, The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker. Yep, five star, gotta do it. Uh, one of those, uh, I guess for, for you young folks, this is an oldie but a goodie. What was he from, the 80s or 90s or something? But uh, yeah, a very good business book. Um, and it is more about not wasting your time on the minutia, like figuring out, having a system, doing the important things that need to be done, very much, you know, very much worth reading. If you're going to do a blog or a, a YouTube channel or something, this will help you. If you consume this book, you'll be better at it. So definitely read that one. Uh, let's see. It looks like after I read the the book, I got the book summary just as a reminder to myself. Uh, same book. Okay, next is the 80-20 principle, the secret to success by achieving more with less by Richard Koch or Koch. Um, the 80-20 principle, Pareto's rule, Pareto's principle. Um, this is, yeah, like anything you can get your hands on that talks about this, look at it. It's so worth it. So worth it. Um, yeah. Uh, understand this principle, even if you don't read this exact book, understand that 80-20 rule. Uh, next book, let's see, we already talked about the tipping point with Malcolm Gladwell. I think he, the, yeah, the last one was a summary. This one was the uh, the actual full book. Worth reading. Do it. Uh, not in the top five, but do it. Uh, let's see here. By Simon Sinek, Start With Why. How Great Leaders Inspire Everyone to Take Action. This is another important to read book. Um, just thinking about human psychology, why we do what we do, why we're interested in things, um, how to get others to do, do things. Uh, yeah, read this. Uh, I would say it might be in a top 20 book for sure. Next is Giant Steps, 
by Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins again. Um, this is a companion to his landmark book, Awaken the Giant Within. Uh, this one was good. As I recall, I would give it a four or five star. Almost everything Tony does is a five star, in my opinion. And yeah, it's, it's floofy and it's it's motivational or whatever, but there's also a lot of good meat in there. And I tell you, when I'm listening to a, a chapter of a Tony Robbins book or one of his tapes, yes, I still do that, or CDs or whatever, I, I get motivated. Like, I, I get excited and I want to go out and do things. And, and if that makes me a, a sucker, new agey, because I'm good enough and doggone it, people like me kind of guy. Okay, fine. Um, but I find it useful. Giant Steps, not one of his best works, but still good, still worth it. Uh, let's see. This was the summary for the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Uh, I don't even bother with a summary, maybe as a reminder, but um, I, I gave this a five star. This one particular one was by Epic Reed and Tim Ferriss, uh, narrated by William Ball. Uh, and I gave it five stars. So maybe it was just a good summary of it, but read the whole four hour work week book by Tim Ferriss. It's, it's interesting to think about. Yeah, it's probably a top 10 book. If you're a mathematician and you're keeping track of all the stuff I'm saying, oh, you're, I, I'm going to suck. Um, let's see here. The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Uh, yeah, either this this was the summary. The last time I mentioned it was the, the full book. So I won't talk about that again. Here's another one that uh, this was the full book of Made to Stick. And maybe the other, or no, this was a summary. The last time I mentioned it was the, the full book. Uh, let's see, cr uh, summary of Crushing It by Gary Vanderchuk. Uh, this one was just the summary by Noah Stewart, this particular version, and I gave it a four-star rating. Uh, it, was, it was okay, but it wasn't eh, that great. Um, I'd say read the actual book, the full book. Next is uh, The Obstacle is the Way, The Timeless Art of Turning Trials into Triumph by Ryan Holiday. And Ryan Holiday, despite his mushy mouth speaking style or whatever he does, um, he's a likable dude. He's like a geeky uh, but genuine seeming kind of guy. And he makes stoicism so accessible. So read this. Definitely consume his content on YouTube and such. Um, I find that when I've actually read the Stoics, I find it a little uh, dense and boring. And I think it's just because because I'm not that bright. But when I read this, the the way that Ryan Holiday translates it, does it in his own words, to me, it's just easier to consume. So if you're not comfortable consuming the original works by the Stoics, Ryan Holiday is a great way to get there. Uh, next is Tribes, We Need You to Lead Us by Seth Godin Godin. Uh, maybe it's Godin, I think. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, I'm not going to say a top 10, but uh, it's an important book to read. So at some point, put this on your list for the next couple of years and uh, yeah, get that one under your, your belt. Okay, I'm not going to tell you why I got this book or yeah, but I, I have a friend who might have needed this. Um, hoarding Disorder, the in-depth psychology behind the mess. I gave that a five-star review. Um, and it's been a while since I've read that one. I don't remember it so much. I'm still a hoarder, but I think maybe that book helped me realize that th those are the tools to stop being a hoarder. And the fact that I didn't shows that I have horrible uh, self-discipline. Um, but that isn't the, for a lack of knowledge. Like I know the thing, I'm just don't, not doing the thing. So yeah, if you're a hoarder, read that. Uh, hopefully you're not. My gosh, think about the people around you. They don't want to look at all that crap. All right. How to have impossible conversations, a very practical guide. You know, it's funny. I read this book some years ago and didn't even pay attention that it was by Peter Bogosian uh, and James Lindsay. And then now in 2024, just in the last couple of months, I've learned about street epistemology and Peter Bogosian is the He's the big daddy. He's the godfather of this stuff. Um, and so I looked up one of his books. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I already read that. Um, and so it's it's a good book. It's well worth reading. Um, I actually just recently finished another book by him, The Handbook for Creating Atheists or something. And I actually thought it was better than this later book. This uh, How to Have Impossible Conversations was 
within the last five or so years and the other was maybe 12 years ago. Next is The Madness of Crowds, Gender, Race, and Identity by Douglas Murray. And Douglas is an interesting guy. He's from the UK um, and he's kind of a conservative leaning guy. And it's, it's kind of rare in conservative circles and he's like so embraced by conservatives. He's gay and he's open about it. Like he's not pushing it around or yelling or screaming about it, but everybody knows, but he's so conservative. The conservatives still love him and, and think that he's okay. Um, and, and they didn't talk about it. So yeah, he, this book was just incredible. I remember my wife and I were driving Tucson, Tucson to the Phoenix area listening to this. Uh, it was one of the places. Um, yeah, good book. Good book. Uh, he also has interviews, but I, I, none of it is as well encapsulated as in this book. So if you kind of want to know a little bit about the wokeness that's going on and, and hear a perspective from a kind of a rational voice, Douglas Murray does that. Good book. Definitely worth it. Um, another book by Ryan Holiday. Perennial Seller, The Art of Making and Marketing Work That Lasts. Um, I gave it a five star and it's very good. Uh, essentially, I'll give you the summary of the book. Um, if you're going to write a book, make sure it's something that if somebody picks up in 300 years, it'll still be of value to them. Um, like, and, and if you're doing the Dummies Guide to Chat GPT-4, um, because that's the latest and greatest now, well, obviously there's going to be Chat GPT-5 and then a bunch of other things we don't even know about. Um, so yeah, I guess if you're in technology or something, maybe that doesn't hold true, but uh, think about the long lasting of the content you produce. Uh, so yeah, that was good by Ryan Holiday. Vagabonding, an uncommon guide to the art of long-term world travel. Yeah, I think I was, I read this because I'm, I was, it's by Rolf Potts and I kind of wanted the idea of going and wandering around and such, but uh, if you're old it's way harder. And like the time to do this is when you're young and you don't have pets and a spouse and a job and all this stuff. Um, if you're the typical modern person whose parents are still taking care of them and rather than you going out and start making your stuff happen at age 15 or 16, you're now 26 and still working on your master's. You're just taking some time off to think about life. It, this is a good book, Vagabonding. But to me, I'm just a little too, at this point in life, serious um, and squared away to be able to give up on all my rat race ambitions to do that. But eh, it was interesting. Um, goals by Zig Ziglar. Uh, Zig is good in a, in a lot of things. What a slick talking old Southern gentleman. And oh, he just great to talk to or great to listen to uh, this. I only gave three stars. I'm surprised. Um, maybe it's because I've read so many goals, things, and, and maybe I was just, I, I'm so inundated with it that this was just a repeat of it, but yeah, I only gave it three stars. I'm actually kind of surprised. Um, Alpha male body language, how to analyze people, speed read people, analyze body language, and use it for persuasion and emotional influence with human psychology. No, I remember I didn't like it. It sucked. Don't bother. Uh, a couple of good ideas, but nah, not worth it. Um, okay, here's an oldie. Here's one from, I don't know, 40 years ago. Uh, Games People Play, the basic handbook of transactional analysis. So if you're interested in psychology, um, if you're interested in kind of knowing what's going on, even if you're not going to do something about it, good book. Uh, good book. It was really big. My wife uh, said that as she was growing up, she remembers that was what everybody was talking about at dinner parties when she was a little girl. Um, that Yeah, so oldie but goodie. I really liked it by Eric Byrne, B-E-R-N-E. Definitely worth the listen, uh, especially if you're married and listen to it with your spouse. Uh, that's best. Listen to it with your spouse and you'll be looking at each other and like nodding and blushing. And yeah, it's good. Next is another Malcolm Gladwell. He's a prolific writer. I think prolific means does a bunch of something um, and he does a bunch of writing. Blink, the power of thinking without thinking. Um, and I'm not sure if this is the one where he talks about 
thinking slow, thinking fast, but uh, yeah, very good. Very much worth the read. Uh, and again, it's one of these books that you, you invest your time in it and it's just going to rattle around in the back of your head and be well worth it in the long run. Hmm. I'm distracted. I'm looking outside and the sunset is beautiful. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to pause. It won't be a pause for you, but I'm going to run out and look at it. As a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take my phone and just do a quick little pan of what it is that I'm looking at as the sun sets. And uh, yeah, maybe you'll enjoy it too. If not, it's only going to take you three or four seconds to see the pan. Wasn't that pretty? Um, those last mountains, by the way, that I zoomed in on, those are about 35 miles away. But uh, yeah, just prettiness. Okay, back to work here. Back to fun. Uh, we talked about Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. Next is Permanent Record by Edward Snowden. Um, yes, eye opener. Uh, if you haven't read this yet, do it. Um, unbelievable the mass surveillance, the, the stuff that's going on. I've seen him in interviews and he doesn't, yeah, I, I don't care for him so much, but the book was just wonderful. So definitely read Permanent Record by Edward Snowden. I have a feeling if you hate him and you think he's a traitor to the country, if you read this, uh, you, you, you might have a new perspective. All right, next is Marksmanship Fundamentals, Improving Your Shooting by Mastering the Basics. Eh. Nah, it wasn't that good. There's a there's a way better book out there on long range and extreme long range shooting. Yeah, that one wasn't worth it. Okay, now another great book, um, Persuasion: Channeling Attention for Change, uh, by another one by Robert Caldini. Definitely worth the read. This is another five star. Um, yeah, if you're interested in understanding persuasion, got to read that. Very good. Uh, next is Neither Bullets Nor Ballots, Essays on Voluntarism. And this was by Carl Watner, George Smith, and Wendy McElroy. Wendy McElroy, uh, you can even see her on one of the early editions of Anarchast. Uh, she was interviewed there. She's one of the OGs of uh, voluntarism. Uh, kind of Wendy, George, and Carl Watner got the, uh, the the Voluntarist was the name of the, the mailing. And they had this publication going. It's the longest running libertarian publication, something like 30 years or more. Um, and Carl Watner and I were friends, and I'm actually a trustee for his intellectual estate. Um, and so obviously I have to read this, and I loved it, just as I love most of what those folks did. George Smith, not so much his personal life, the way he treated women, but uh, George, uh, George aside, Carl Watner and Wendy, they're awesome. Um, Carl passed away a few years ago, by the way. Got to read that one. Um, the Fix Was On. The Fed and the Cartelization, I probably pronounced that wrong, of the American Banking System by Murray Rothbard. Um, this was good, um, but it wasn't as easy to understand, I didn't think, as G. Edward Griffin's The Creature from Jekyll Island. This one was much shorter <laughs> by 30 hours, um, but I, The Creature from Jekyll Island is, I think, better and if you're not going to read it, then read this one to understand the Federal Reserve um, or read them both. But yeah, anything by Murray is probably worth worth our time to, to listen to. Okay, here we're on to uh, book number three of the four-part series by Robert Ardrey. This is the one I said I thought might be one of my two favorites of the, the, the four. Um, the Social Contract, A Personal Inquiry into the Evolutionary Sources of Order and Disorder. Robert Archery's Nature of Man series, book three, uh, just wonderful. If he was going to talk about how to repair rototiller blades, 
I would listen to it. Um, just the best writing style ever, ever, ever. Yay, Robert Ardry. Next, Win Bigley by Scott Adams. Scott is a master communicator. Um, he's the guy, the Dilbert comic. He came up with that. Um, and then in the last five or 10 years, he's been more into social or uh, political commentary. He has a daily um, podcast or video cast or something like that. Um, he's an ultra liberal. That's how he described himself. Now I think he says he's nothing. He doesn't even describe himself. Uh, but this book is maybe my favorite of his. And he, he kind of uses the Donald Trump thing, his running for office and such um, as a, a storyline as he talks. Um, and he, he's an ultra liberal, so he's not, you know, not necessarily agrees with Donald Trump, but he knew he was going to be president um, beforehand. And he was one of the few public figures who was saying, oh yeah, Donald's going to win this one hands down. Uh, when he went against the uh, the racist lady, the Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Um, by the way, I say she's racist because I, w one of my for former jobs, <clears throat> excuse me, was uh, executive protection. And I was working once with a former Secret Service guy. Actually, he was still Secret Service at that time. And he confided in me how much he hated working with the Clintons. Um, he went into a, uh, a room once. He was or he was in the room with uh, the guy from the some military branch who had the bomb sniffing dog. And they were checking out the hotel suite before Hillary arrived, just to make sure there were no bombs. And it was a black guy, the, the dog handler. And Hillary came in and said, get that inner out of here. Um, just like mean and rude. And that's kind of how they how they were to protect. But anyway, uh, that's a side note. Um, let's move on from there. Next is uh, a summary, a summary of Caldini. Um, summary, analysis, and review of Robert Caldini's persuasion. Uh, this was by Insta Read. I don't recall how good that was. So if you're going to read the actual book, I just read the actual book. Here is another one that was my wife's. So we will skip it. Okay. Uh, the Real Anthony Fauci. Remember, I read a portion of this, my wife and I. Let's see here. Yeah, I think we were listening to this as we were heading from Las Vegas, New Mexico to the uh, Arizona, to, to the Phoenix area. Real Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, Big Pharma, and the Global War on Democracy and Public Health. So here's a collectivist, for sure, kind of a Marxist guy, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Um, and he's, this is kind of his conspiracy conjecturist book. I wish it would have been strong enough to be hypothesis or a theory, but it didn't quite rise to that level. However, neither did John Taylor Gatto's book, The Underground History of the American Education System, and they're both books that everybody should read. Just to kind of go, yeah, he's not providing good, solid, reason-based scientific proof, but there are some areas of life that it's hard to get to that, and this provides a good enough hint that I think everyone should uh, should put this book into their brain and let it rattle around and see if anything sounds like it might make sense. Next is The Game, Penetrating the Secret Society of Pickup Artists by Neil Strauss. Good book. A lot, a lot of wasted time in it, but also good. Um, this is something that if you're not a, if you don't know what a, a pickup artist is, uh, a PUA, they call them, it was big some years ago, but these are guys who like almost professionally go out and pick up on women at bars and there's a whole science to it. And this book should be read by people who are interested in seeing if they're being manipulated, if others are being manipulated. Uh, every 16 year old girl, 15 year old girl these days, whatever age she's starting to get with it, uh, she needs to read this book first. Um, not too much before because it'll ruin your innocence, but um, a, a very important book. Next is Reflexology, How to Relieve Stress and Reduce Pain Through Reflexology Techniques by Jen Solace. For some reason, I gave it a five star. That must have been a typo. I thought I recalled it as being horrible. 
If you if you read this book, I'm, I'm interested in reflexology and, and it's a good thing, but I didn't think this book was very good from my recollection, but now I'm seeing I gave it five stars. <laughs> Look at me go. Let me know what you think if you read it. Next is The Truth About COVID-19, Exposing the Great Reset, Lockdowns, Vaccine Passports, and the New Normal. I gave that a five star. It was by Dr. Joseph Mercola and Ronnie Cummings. And I don't really remember it, so I don't know. But evidently, I gave it a five star as well. I definitely remember reading Dear Reader, the unauthorized autobiography of Kim Jong uh, Kim Jong Un uh, Two by Michael Malice. Awesome, awesome book. Um, yeah, that was that was really good. Michael Malice. I don't always like his book titles, um, but this one was awesome. Like, yeah, in general, I'd say he has worse book titles. Like they're just wrong um but this one was great so definitely a five star there another book by michael malice it was evidently my uh, next read the new right a journey to the fringe of american politics i'm not sure that the right uh, new right was a good title but that's how he likes to title his stuff um great book like some real brilliance in there um opening my eyes up to all kinds of things and as i say i'm not into the conservative righty lefty kind of paradigm or that whole area but this was a good look into the the extreme edge of one side of it but yeah very good book okay this one was mentioned uh this was recommended to me by my good friend tim down in texas um how to stop worrying and start living time-tested methods for conquering worry by dale carnegie an oldie but a goodie um yeah, if you kind of seem overwhelmed and too much going on and you need to chill out a little bit and kind of take some advice from an old man, good book. The Propaganda Project uh, by Phil M. Williams. It was It's good. Um, they're my favorite propaganda book isn't on Audible. Um, it is The Bernays Reader. I don't think it's on Audible. Um, so I had to read it on paper but it is it is hands down the best uh if you've heard of ed bernays he was a kind of the father of propaganda um yeah anyway this one is propaganda project good book i gave it a five star ic read it uh next is how to invest in airbnb properties create wealth and passive income through smart vacation rentals investing as i recall this was just a real short little summary thing an hour or three um so if you're interested in that kind of thing i gave it a four star at eh, you can look at it but eh, it's not the be all end all next was i believe another shorty no nah, maybe this was a full book i don't recall dark psychology and manipulation Master the Art of Persuasion, Develop Emotional Influence, NLP, Hypnosis Techniques, Body Language, and Mind Control Secrets. I gave it a five star uh, by Ray Smith, and I don't remember it specifically. Um, yeah, but it was evidently very good. Unlike another book by the same name, Dark Psychology, uh, similar book cover looking thing, except this one by James Williams, I only gave it a three-star review. So if you're going to do one or two, one or the other of those, do the one by Ray Smith, Dark Psychology, not the one by James Williams. Next is The Challenger Sale, Taking Control of Customer Conversation by Matthew Dixon, Brent Abramson, Adamson, sorry. Uh, I only gave it a three-star. And there are so many great books out there that I won't even keep talking. If I gave it a three-star, eh, skip it. Letters from a Stoic, Penguin Classics by Seneca and Robin Campbell. Um, this is one of those things that, this is one of the great books by the, the Stoics, and yet I had trouble really getting it, understanding it. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I don't know that I completely understood it real well. So. Um, Give it a try if you want, but next is Loser Think, another one by Scott Adams. Uh, Loser Think, How Untrained Brains Are Ruining America. This is, I think, my second favorite of his books. 
Um, again, he's the creator of Dilbert, uh, Win Bigley, and Loser Thinker. I think my two favorites of his. Um, yeah, good, interesting perspectives from a from a lefty, uh, from a more progressive Democrat kind of person. Uh, next is eighty twenty sales and marketing, and this one I believe by Perry Marshall. I'm not sure if I gave it a five star. So yeah, must be good. Uh, if I said so, it must be uh, by Perry Marshall, 8020 sales and marketing. Uh, read that one. Thought we went over that one already. Maybe it was a summary. The other one, another one by Robert Green, 48 laws of power. Um, again, some nasty tactics, just like the Paul, uh, Solinsky book or Saul Alinsky book. Um, but really worth reading and understanding and just having it rattling around in the back of your brain. 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Next is Unscripted, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Entrepreneurship. Um, this is by MJ DeMarco. And uh, yeah, this is, this is really good. This is, this is one that I would say is in my top couple few books. If you're not squared away, doing well financially, and you're young, and you want to go out and make it happen. Um, I, I guess I would say rich dad, poor dad, four hour work week, millionaire next door. Um, this unscripted by MJ DeMarco. Those are probably among my, I'm sure I'm missing one or two, but those would be in my top half dozen books. So definitely worth reading. I recently finished another book that he wrote. Oh, well, last year I did. Um, I think he might, oh, but we might get to it. I'll skip that for now. But yeah, MJ DeMarco is great. And by the way, read that book and then get onto his Fastlane Forum website. Uh, it's a great forum. He built it, did the coding, he moderates it. Um, and it's just a great group of entrepreneurial go get them kind of folks. I should spend more time there. But yeah, he runs a, a tight ship, a good show. It's, it's worth your time. Uh, and I think it's called Millionaire Fastlane because that was his very first book that I haven't read. Um, and I think this unscripted kind of takes the place of it. I'm not sure. Uh, next, before you begin, a selection from Rich Dad Advisors, Buying and Selling a Business by Garrett Sutton. I don't remember. I'm tempted to say it wasn't great, but I don't remember. I didn't rate it. Uh, the Like Switch, an FBI, ex-FBI agent's guide to influencing, attracting, and winning people over. Um the like switch. I don't recall, but I'm still thinking, yeah, I think this might've been a more beginner level book and, and I'm not the world's best expert, but I'm far enough along that another beginner book, uh, probably a good reminder of some points though. So I, I don't recall maybe worth doing, but yeah, do a Caldini book. Those are, those are even better. Um, the 12 week year, get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. I think that was a good book. I think that was a good book. So I'm not going to say it's a top 10, but I recall, I think I recall that being a good book. I really should, when I read a book, I should pull over and take five minutes to write the review and copy and paste it into a Google document so that. I can look back at it and remember what I read, do some sort of a journaling. Uh, I'm wishing now as I'm going through this with you, I'm wishing that I had done that and I, I didn't. Okay, this was one of my last books within the last month that I finished. Uh, Reframe Your Brain, The User Interface for Happiness and Success by Scott Adams again. Um, and this is very good. He just offers or offers a bunch of tricks, little brain hacks. He's a, a hypnotist. And so he kind of understands psychology, NLP, that kind of stuff. And uh, there were a lot of great ideas. This is, I don't know how many, I, I forget what it was, but hundreds of uh, little brain hacks here, how to reframe things. Um, you know, instead of saying, I'm going to go get some, some wine because I enjoy the taste. Well, you say, well, what does wine do? Well, it, it deadens your senses. It makes you heavier. Um, like it doesn't have really much good about it. So 
if I'm giving it a positive name, I'm more likely to continue drinking. If I said, oh, I'm going to have another sip of poison, then maybe as time goes on, I think, oh, well, I don't drink poison. And then you're maybe going to drink less or stop drinking or whatever. Um, so he, he made the comment that, you know, of the hundreds of ideas he gives, some will work for you and some won't. I would say this one hasn't worked for me yet, um, but very good book. Okay, and here was here's one that had so many great parts to it. Um, I put out something um, on a a couple group pages in the voluntarist space, and uh, my friend Skylar Collins said, uh, "Hey, I know a book for you. Everything voluntary from politics to parenting by Skylar Co Skylar Collins and Chris R. Brown, uh, narrated by Scott Larson, and." Okay, so Skyler is a voluntarist who has the website Everything Voluntary. He's based out of Salt Lake City, and I I don't get the feeling that he's um, ridiculously wealthy. But this narrator, Scott Larson, who did his book, I was just amazed at what a brilliant job the narrator did. Um, there's something like 38 chapters. I wish I had written down more of them, but if you if you're interested in that book, get in touch with me. Um, Skylar sent me the book titles because as you do it online on Audible, it's just chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and you don't remember 38 chapters later. Like I, I know I liked 16 and 18, and but I forgot a bunch of them. Well, he, he has the link that you can go to his webpage and they have all those articles for free if you just want to read them. Um, and you can kind of see which ones are good and not that you're interested in 16 and 18 for sure. I think 13 was good. Uh, everything voluntary from politics to parenting by Skylar Collins. Next, a manual for creating atheists by Peter Bogosian. Just finished that. This dude does not like delusional people. He does not like theists. Um, he doesn't like snake oil salesmen, anybody who isn't thinking rationally, he's got a real thing for him. And uh, yeah, I don't know that I'm as hardcore as he is. And I think he does it from a very, a very good standpoint. As a matter of fact, my buddy, uh, my buddy was visiting me today, took the long drive up here. Thank you, Tony. And we were hanging out and Tony's a Christian. And he was saying, hey, it helps me. Like, it's good for me to know that that I didn't try to change him. Like, I'm not going to say to my buddy, hey, stop believing in something that you think is helping you. Peter Bogosian's um, argument would be, no, being delusional does not help people. Believing in that which does not exist does not help people. Um, and he makes some very good arguments. It was an excellent book. Even if you are a theist and you don't want to change that, um, but you do want to be able to look at other things rationally and evidence-based you know, thinking, a very good book for, for thinking better, for critical thinking. Um, speaking of which, there's a number of books here that didn't come up for some reason, that's weird, that are about critical thinking. Um, Bo Bennett. Bo Bennett has written quite a few books, Dr. Bo Bennett. And he's a big time lefty, but I still like reading his books. His favorite, or my favorite that he did was 300 Logical Fallacies, something to that effect. Um, but he has several others that are really good, just about critical thinking. Um, yeah, so a little extra there that's not on the list. Okay, another good one here. Uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb, Anti-Fragile, Things That Gain From Disorder. I read The Black Swan I listened to it a few years ago and loved it. And okay, I kind of agree with some critics who say, okay, he had a couple of good ideas and he took a whole long book to say them, but I actually gained a lot from the whole book. Um, like not things I can repeat, but I think things that are rattling around and helping me make decisions and think clearly. Um, but this anti-fragile, definitely worth the read. Nicholas is, uh, Nassim Nicholas is just a brilliant dude kind of guy you'd want to be a, a friend with, even though he's probably different, he'd still be a like, oh, let's go hang out. I, I'm going to be smarter when I walk away from him. So very good book, Anti-Fragile. Um, Alex Hermosi, 
Uh, I follow him on YouTube and watch a bunch of his content. He's a motivational kind of dude. Uh, he, he started out with the gym and then he did something else. And I think he sold his companies for something like a hundred million. And so now he's being a content producer and he is busting his butt working hard. He's a bodybuilder kind of guy, fitness guy. Um, he's just fun and motivational. By the way, you're, you'll see he has a strip on his nose. It's because he's got some bad nasal medical thing and that strip makes it so he can breathe which he likes to do and i'm glad he does because this was a good good book um and actually he recommended it and i didn't do it at first i want to go over this book again sometime when i'm slow so maybe never uh but having the written book in front of you and the audio book and listening to it while you're reading and circle circling things would be a great way to really get this information and put it into action and he's not just kind of a a big idea macro kind of guy, like he's telling you, this is how you go about getting leads. Um, and so you're going to want to either take notes or be able to circle things in his book to go back if you're actually going to do it. Um, the White Pill by Michael Malice. Um, I hate the title. I get it. I, I didn't get it until the last chapter. And I think that was his point. He's kind of being really sophisticated in his titling. Um, I wish he hadn't taken that name. But then again, I haven't written a better book that should. It, it doesn't describe the book well. Here's what the book should have been titled. Um, How Russia went from being crappy to a huge change in one lifetime. And therefore, we all have a chance. That's the punchline. Well worth listening to. You'll cry. You'll be amazed. You'll be shocked at how horrible humans can be. Uh, kind of almost was one of the first history books that's interested me. I'm generally not interested in history. Like I, when I read it, it, it's boring and I have to force myself. This was a, you didn't have to force yourself. This was a good read. White Pill by Michael Malice. Uh, next, yes. 50 Scientifically Proven Ways to Be Persuasive. Um, this is by Noah Goldstein, Stephen Martin, and Robert Caladini. Very good book. Read it. Uh, as I recall, it wasn't horribly long. So yeah, just no reason not to. Definitely read it. Okay, here is a definite absolute read. The Righteous Mind, Why Good People Are Divided by Politics and Religion. Here's another extreme leftist kind of guy. Even though the first chapter or two, I couldn't tell. Like usually... I know my biases come out right away if you're listening to me, and most people's do. This guy hit it for like a ch two two chapters, maybe. Uh, Jonathan Haidt, H A I D T, uh, the Righteous Mind. Read it, read it, read it, read it. Like this is a a philosophy book, uh, essentially mm, philosophy, psychology. Um, well worth reading immediately. Okay, here's one that I reread from years ago. I think years ago I did the. Uh, written version, and then here I listened to it. Um, Neil Bortz, the hilarious uh, talk show guy, AM top, talk show guy out of Atlanta, uh, libertarian, definitely a capital L. He's very much pro-government, um, but more libertarian leaning, um, and he's just hilarious. Definitely a fun read not one of your top ones if you're if you're dedicated and you don't read for pleasure you don't listen for pleasure and you just want information okay this isn't it but if you want a kind of a a chill out book to relax and not be as serious that's a very good one uh oh you know what i'm just thinking i'm seeing so many or i'm thinking of so many books that aren't on here that i know that i read i think in audible if you finish the book and you don't listen to the last few seconds it might show it as unread still or is not completed i'll bet you that's where some are missing so i'll have to go back through and maybe do a third version of this um in an update maybe also include some of the uh physical books paper books that i've read um principles for dealing with the changing world order why nations succeed or fail uh roy dalio roy Do dalio huge maybe one of the best investors of all time or biggest uh like has one of the biggest funds um, and so he's a, he's a mainstream guy, but he also is kind of knowledgeable and understands what the federal reserve is doing in large part and what governments do. And this isn't, he's definitely not a voluntarist. He's definitely not an Austrian economist, but 
pretty darn knowledgeable, um, very good, a little bit deeper book, very much worth uh, reading, especially if you're interested in, is it Russia or China that's going to be the big world power that the U.S. has to compete with? And okay, so here's one of his great points that he made there that he kind of stumped me. And his point was, and I don't believe him, but there will always be the biggest, baddest, most powerful government in the world. There will always be some government. And even if half of the world became voluntarist, he doesn't say this, but I'm adding some. Even if most of the world became voluntarist next year or in 10 years, there will still be governments. And of those governments, one will be really big and bad and hardcore. Who do you want it to be? Do you want it to be the United States government or do you want it to be North Korea? And so you can't just ignore these things away. Something's going to happen. You ought to learn a little bit about it, even if you don't take any action. Okay, good point. Good point, Ray. Um, too often, I think I do just look at the the morality of something and not the pragmatic um, probabilities of what's up. So even though I'm not going to change what I do, I'm going to always do what is right. I do like to know huh, this is kind of where we're headed. And that book is a good way to help us get there. Okay, I believe this was the last of Robert Ardrey's books. Yes, um, volume four. This is The Hunting Hypothesis, A Personal Conclusion Concerning the Evolutionary Nature of Man, Roger, Ro, uh, Robert Ardrey's Nature of Man series, volume four. Uh, so yeah, this wasn't one of my favorites, but it was still a good one. Like all four of those books are so worth reading. Uh, very good, very good stuff. Um, next is Uncomfortable Ideas by Bo Bennett, PhD. Um, this is the leftist critical thinking guy um, who is really, in many ways, pretty darn squared away. I like him a lot. Um, a little cocky and such, but but he's he's good. He's good. Um, so Uncomfortable Ideas by Bo Bennett. Easy read, short definitely worth it. Next is the controlled demolition of the American empire. Uh, my friend Patrick Smith was the narrator of this, which is kind of why I chose to listen to it. Uh, it was written by Jeff Berwick and Charlie Robinson and um, <clears throat> worth the read. I gave it a four star. It was worth the, the, the listen to. However, there's so much conjecture, just irresponsible, unsubstantiated conjecture mixed in with some much more provable or demonstrable or things that have evidence. Um, so you definitely have to read it with a grain of salt, but good, good book, uh, worth the, uh, worth the read, not top level, but once you get through another 40 books, then uh, it opens your mind and uh, you get rid of the 40% of just silliness. And the other part was pretty darn good. Uh, next, the skyscape scraper curse and how Austrian economists predicted every major economic crisis of the last century. Okay. Mark Thornton, um, who I, I got to just meet briefly and shake his hand. Uh, Marty introduced me to him. Marty is Lou Rockwell's wife. Um, I went down to the Mises Institute on a walkabout maybe 10 years ago. And uh, so I got to meet him for 30 seconds and do the typical fan thing of, hey, thanks for all you do. Um, he's an academic dude. He's a a dry academic um, economist. So it's not an exciting read. And it, it takes a lot of words to get the point across. Um, so you might even just look for one of his articles on this. Uh, like just a summary of it. And that would probably do. Um, but the book was good. Just, yeah, too many words to say too little. Um, Fourth Turning, An American Prophecy by William Strauss and Neil Howe. My buddy, Joel, um, he recommended this and he liked it. And I gave it a two star. I just, it didn't, didn't, 
ring with me. And yet this guy who I trust and love, and he was actually on the show. I think we were talking about Christianity and, and such. Uh, he was on the, the uh, on this YouTube channel uh, some years ago. And, and I, like, I, I love the guy and I trust him and he's brilliant. And boy, did we ever have a different attitude about this this book. And if you're watching this, Joel, sorry, thanks for giving it to me. I appreciate the gift. Um, but I'm kind of being honest in this review. Um, next is Inflation by iMinds. And I think I didn't care for that because it was, uh, yeah, no, it was just a quickie, not that great. Um, An Inquiry Concerning Human Understanding uh, by David Hume. Uh, first published in 1748. Um, Hume is beyond me. Um, I don't have the, I don't know, cognitive ability. I don't know the smartness in that way to really understand it all. Um, it was good. I, I gave it a five star. Um, it was interesting, but I know that I got probably I nibbled 5% out of the deepness, the wonderfulness, probably right, probably wrong about a bunch of stuff, but I didn't really get it deeply. That would probably be something that if I could force myself to go through that long book again, um, I, I would probably gain more each time. I don't know that I have the the patience. I'd probably rather turn to uh, you know Patrick Smith and Christian Moore and just say, hey, will you please explain to me and repeat it slowly and simply so I can understand it um, because they get him, they understand him and he, he was great. Inflation 911, how to profit and protect your money from, from economic inflation. I gave this a five star um, and I think it was a really quick, easy listen uh, by Lucas Heidel, uh, inflation 911. Yeah, worth it for that short thing. And one of the things I do, just kind of a little side note, with Audible, I, most books are around 15 bucks or, or more, some are less. And kind of my personal little thing is, if the if I'm looking at a book and it costs more than $15, I use one credit on Amazon or on Audible. If it's less than that, I just pay for it. And I think I currently have like 10 credits left, but I don't want to burn a credit up on a $3 summary book. I'll spend it on a really long book. I hope that's not hurting the authors because I do want to help them. Um, but that's kind of what I do. Okay, next up is, uh, yeah, I reread this one. The first time was in paper. First two or three times was on paper. Um, this one was listening to uh, Og Mandino, the greatest salesman in the world. Well worth it. Um, I don't get it all, but it was, it was, it's a good story. Just a good, you know, the, the merchant, you know, went along with his camel train and he carried with him a sack of gold. And within this sack of gold, were it just it's a, a well done thing that has a great punchline. Um, like you'll be a better communicator and salesperson if you uh, listen to it, even though I stumbled all over the description of the book. Um, and looks like lastly on this list is Defending the Undefendable 2, Freedom in All Realms. Uh, this is by Walter Block, of course, narrated by my man, Patrick Smith. Um, and so the Defending the Undefendable 1 was also excellent. And you can get those, by the way, from the Driest Voice Awesome Volunteer Guy from the Mises Institute. Um, it's hard to stay awake. Like, don't, don't listen to it while you're driving. Um, but... That book's available for free from the Mises Institute on Audible. And then this one, the uh, Defending the Undefendable 2, is available on Amazon. Um, well worth it. Like Walter takes these ideas, these jobs, these people who everybody hates, and oh, there's no defense for somebody doing that. And he actually comes up with a defense and says, hey, well, here's how why maybe they're, here is why maybe they aren't so horrible. Well, it's good. All right. Well, that was not a complete list. Um, it looks like I went over seven pages and there were 20 per page. I wonder if I missed something. Cause I feel like, I don't feel like I did 140 books that I talked about. Maybe I did. Uh, maybe when you're having fun, time flies. So thank you for listening. Hopefully this was a value to you. Um, if not, I'll never know because you probably started this and then left after about 30 seconds or one minute. 
I see that there was a view, so I didn't know if you, you watched it or not. So <laughs> hopefully to one or two or three people, this was of use and you got a couple new ideas for reads and uh, aren't wasting your time on a few books. And uh, if you do like this, please let me know, like write it in the comments. And then I can kind of put together the unfinished books that I did finish, but the, you know, there are three seconds remaining on the, the audible thing. And then maybe some of the paper books that I think are wonderful also that were not audible version. Have a great one. Read, learn, challenge yourself.